this and just hold it as steady as I can. Uh, whoops. So um, the, the first question I had w was about the compass rose. I read a little bit about it, and, uh, and, and it's something that is associated with finding your way uh, and with maps and with not only helping you uh, get to where you know you're going, but I think to some extent helping you to get where, uh, get where you need to go when you're lost. Uh, I wondered if, if that figures in your inspiration and your thought process in developing the idea of the Compass Rose. I would say it definitely is part of the part of the inspiration between behind the Compass Rose, and I think it's uh, helpful to understand. But I think uh, to preface what I what I'll say in reference to that question is I I'll, I'm perfectly amenable to giving people my history and my biography, and however that can help them or hinder them. That's then it's their problem, but I rather that everybody come to this experience of seeing the compass rose uh, with their own history, and they plug into the piece with their own biography and psyche, because everybody will have a dip, become more, will come away from it with their own experience rather than trying to understand where I was coming from, because I think at this point once the piece is is you know is put together and, and has its own life uh, I really think what I've tried to do in sculpture is a very kind of populist approach which of course is very often antithetical to the art world because the art world survives on elitism and I came out 35 40 years ago as an artist in a, in a very popular fashion trying to I was doing pieces uh, even without permission in the public domain because I wanted people I wanted to wake people up to, to recharge perception, to reinvigorate the act of seeing, which basically, uh, you know, we have become anesthetized by the media and I don't, you know, by television and passivity and paternalism uh, in society. This, by that I mean that the, you know, society dictates meaning rather than allows people to make their own conclusions. And I've tried to circumnavigate all that stuff. As far as your, to get back to your point, your question, I grew up on Long Island. My father was a small town doctor, uh, but he was a fisherman. He loved to fish. He was a dyed in the wall Ernest Hemingway. And uh, he was a harpoonist, believe it or not, like Queequeg. It's just a true story. And he had a very modest fishing boat. And mm -hmm. I finally, I hated to fish, but my father, because my father would drag me out as a, as a five-year-old to fish with him. And we would go out, you know, all day. And, um, and I got sick every time. So I, I hated to fish, but what my father gave me was the sea. And we had a house on the sea, and I spent all my time, you know, I spent all the time I spent with my dad on the boat fishing. So I was on the ocean. And what I came away from it was, with it, I came away from that experience, those experiences, uh, in that period of my youth was the sea and what the sea gave me was a connection to the infinite and so I've stayed close to the sea I've always had a house on Long Island even though I work in the city and the sea has guided me and it's inspired me and that's why a, a, a lot of my work is referring to primitive na navigational devices and and then what ha and the interesting part of the the, the, the summary here <laughs> is that I moved from Long Island in my early 20s to Manhattan and the first thing that I couldn't deal with was I couldn't find the horizon I couldn't find and I and even though New York is on the sea it's a port city obviously um, I couldn't find the horizon which was to me a sense of, it gave me a sense of freedom as a kid and a sense of strength and independence and I was never afraid when I had you know when I was when I was for some reason uh, it helped me conquer whatever the fears are that we have when we're young. And what I did when I went to Manhattan was climbed up to the tops of buildings to, to find the horizon line. Basically, uh, became metaphoric, but very literal initially, to get free, to find space. Because in Manhattan, you live in the, you know, you live in the canyons between brick buildings. So I climbed up to the top of buildings to find the horizon so that I could, because I could, whatever the, that psychological freedom is that you get by allowing your vi vision to go as far as it can uh, 
you know, I think the implications of that are pretty literal. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a literal freedom of seeing, and that spatial freedom was very, very liberating to me and inspiring. So, I would say a lot of my work comes out of that, and and then we, you know, it spins off into other forms and shapes. But the compass rose is is referring to the sea and primitive navigation devices, and. Um, and it is directional only in as much as, it, as metaphoric, really. Although the way we set the piece, we oriented it toward due north. But it's gonna, everyone's going to find their own orientation because the piece is round. So, you know, there's really no point to it, as it, as it were, since the piece is round, like the world. I think that kind of was a, a, a little lengthy, but I think I answered what okay. you were asking me.